Hey, this is Stuart Smith from Stewartism Designs. We are going to be doing some molding of my plaster pieces here. These plaster pieces were poured from my life cast and then I altered them to make some cool mass. But I got some questions as to, hey, look, you're doing a silicone mold and that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, the reason why I'm doing silicone is, number one, I can sit there and pour up latex out of it. You just have to heat the mold up a little bit more. Uh, but two, I'll be able to do resin and hard and soft foam. I'll be able to do cement, plaster, and a couple other things. So the mold will be multi-purpose. Multi so first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to paint these plaster pieces and then we're going to put a really heavy clear on them. Reason being is, is when we pour up the silicone, I want the smoothest mold possible coming out of there. And that way the mold will last for a long time. It will secure detail. Also, something on the plaster, sometimes you get air holes and stuff you just really can't help. And coming along and clearing and painting it all up and making it smooth will help in producing a really nice mold. So let's get to painting these bad boys and then on to building the walls for the mold process. I'm probably going to sit there and give it another two coats because I really want it nice and uniform and that will help dramatically with uh, giving a smooth surface. Now also, I mean latex not so much of a big deal coming out. Latex come out pretty much everything but when I'm using the hard and soft foams if the mold is smoother um, it is much easier to get your positive out. So we're going to be coating these and it'll be about two possibly three coats because our first coat's going to soak right in. Second coat will be more of a topical. Third coat will be the major topical and then our clear coat. And then uh, my silicone has already arrived and I will be able to sit there and build the walls for the mold and start pouring them up. We are going to be doing bumper molds versus a thin coat with a mother mold. I pour these up so they're flat on the bottom so I can flip them right around and um, be able to pull that way. Uh, they last a lot longer. Yes, more expensive to do, but the end result is these molds will last for years, especially when you are religious in using your mold release. So just FYI when you're doing your plaster, or even works for clay. I've done this with clay as well, but I'm doing the plaster right now and we just want to make sure it's a nice clean coat and then clear coat and then okay, we'll folks. be building uh, the shell for the, for the mold. Heads are cleared, two coats of black, two coats of clear coat. So they're nice and smooth as best as I can. Sometimes the plaster soaks it up a little bit more than I want. But that's all right. We're going to sit there and be able to put um, uh, Manspray 200 on these before the silicone is poured on them. 
But now it's time to build the walls and get it ready to pour up the silicone. So on to that process and away we go. Okay, we've used hot glue to secure the sculpture to the bottom of the plate. It is sitting on foam core. Built walls out of foam core using the same hot glue. Cutting periodically all the way around. And then secured it finally with some tape just to make sure that the weight of the silicone won't bust the walls out. Um, and then we use this. This is Manspray 200. It is a mold release. You get it from Reynolds. And we spray this on the inside your walls and the sculpture itself till you get a nice little glist in there. Try to hit the side and the bottom so we get our mold out real good. All right. Yeah, that stuff's nasty. So uh, I'm talking. We should be wearing a mask to do that. <laughs> Safety first. And now we're going to wait a half hour before we pour our silicone. So let's mix up the silicone and then that silicone can sit and wait until that's all set up. We want to make sure that that stuff is dry on there before we pour our stuff. So time to mix some silicone and we wait. This is Mold Max 30. It is a tin based silicone. We're going to use this rather than the more expensive platinum comes part A, part B. I got a five gallon bucket because I had quite a few to pour up. Uh, this is part Mold Max part B and of course the bucket is part A. And we're going to shake this really good. Okay and then I'm going to introduce, I got about two gallons left in here. We're just going to pour that right on top. Now if I sit there and do small amounts, I'll put the B in first and then pour the silicone on top. And that way I'm not worried about getting a bunch of uh, silicone that has not reacted with the B in there. But now that we had that in there, oh shoot, this is not going to be fun. It's too deep, but that's okay because we're going to sit there and grab a, I can normally do it with my hand, but now we're going to stir that around with a stick, make sure she's really well blended. All right, I got myself a decent stick here, and we're going to blend this really good. Try not to slop it around. We want to make sure. Sometimes it's you want to make sure you get that B off the sides. So at the end we should have a nice pink color. Uh, try to make sure you get all of it mixed real well. Take your time with this. This is probably the most important part of the process. Reason being, you get. Uh, just straight silicone chunks inside your area you're gonna have soft spots in your mold and that poses issues uh, a lot of times areas around it will allow it to dry but um, I've had molds because I didn't do it properly take a week to set up versus the 12 hours that it normally happens and Sometimes, depending on the temperatures, and it's always temperature. Temperature is really important. Sometimes you sit there and get a decent temperature, and they might sit up in six hours. But I never sit there and pour anything into them or demold the master until at least 24 to 36 hours later. That way I'm sure that I'm not going to damage the mold, getting impatient to try to pour something up. Now I've had molds from this stuff for years and it is wonderful, wonderful uh, 
foam, both soft and hard, resin, fiberglass, uh, latex, and um, resins. Oh, and we also we produce uh, uh, skull molds and uh, cement molds, uh, cement skulls out of the stuff too. So I could be pouring up foam in it one day, do some latex molds the next, and then the next day pour up a bunch of cement ones for in the yard or the fire pit or what have you. So you can do a lot with it. Just make sure, and we'll go through the process, and you can see that in one of my other videos, that mold release for the caustic ones, your foams, your resins, fiberglass, uh, anything of that nature has to be used each and every time to protect the mold from the heat produced from the product. Latex, cement, don't have to worry about it. All right, we got the silicone. Beautiful. Mold is ready. I place it on the ground. This stuff gets really heavy. So instead of trying to hoist this thing up on the table, you just put them on the ground. It's easier to do it that way. Grab it. And slowly pour it over the top of your master. Let it cover the whole thing. And then she'll start filling in the blanks. Now, I'm going to tap it. Helps get some of the air bubbles out. Rarely do I ever have a mold, especially with this stuff, that will give me an air pocket that causes issues when it comes time to the molding process. Time to tell you blow on it and kill some of those bubbles. But you do this, a lot of those air bubbles that might be caught in an undercut will come to the surface. Just be gentle, you don't want to bust your walls. poured wait for it to dry awesome okay here we are the final solution beautiful thing bad boy here's my sculpture again plaster and then painted with um this is my my face it was a live cast and then i sculpted in things in it so um you can say, hey, look, you got a little part of Stewie, okay? And here is the mold. Now, due to the fact that I painted it and then clear coated the plaster, I have a nice shiny inside mold, which was going to show off the detail real nice. Um, again, it's a bumper mold. It's going to lay flat and be able to sit there and put foam, resin, cement, latex, Soft foam, hard foam, uh, you name it, I can pour it into it. So there you are. You could try this at home, sculpt something up, and pour away. And then you'd have a mold that will last a long time. There will be other videos coming up soon of the actual usage of this, both for foam and for mask making. Thanks a lot for watching.